Do -do -do. Oh, hey, what's going on, you crazy kids? And no, I don't have a growth uh, going on today. Just a nice little ice pack there. So ignore me as we go. I uh, stood up another one of these sites that I have come to really, I don't know, entertain myself, if nothing else. And I thought I would give another angle some walkthroughs. Um, this is that, that onion layer, if, if you haven't seen it. Um, I've been abusing the English language, and I found it quite addictive. I don't know. Um, when I really care about the sort of things, I've begun some nomenclature to force those sorts. And so as you work your way down, those of you that are familiar, we have our common kernel, our core, where all of our aggregate roots and DDD stuff's going to live, infrastructure, where we start to think about persistence, maybe a database, for sure a database in this case. Um, some shared API uh, artifacts because Blazor doesn't enjoy some of the uh, carryover MVC binding stuff I'm doing with the APIs. Uh, and so that'll be like your view models and uh, related. And then the actual API where we find those endpoints and a Blazor client. The highlight today will be probably more interestingly the tests and the testing uh, that has gone around it. And the thing we have kind of pointed all this at is in fact the Conway Game of Life. If you're not familiar, Conway's Game of Life is a simple set of rules that if you start in some state, in this case we're just considering all of these squares on or off, um, then you apply these rules and different behaviors will emerge, uh, such as you see demonstrated here. Uh, most of the simulations die off after a number of iterations, and the board is, is cleared, and you need to do something else to reseed it. Uh, but there are some interesting patterns that will e emerge, and uh, there you go, nice little breakdown of those. So, in an effort to pull something like this together, I ultimately wanted to start with some pretty simple stuff, and I, I was there's a national day of code this weekend, or was this week? And I was sitting in on some workshops at work on TDD, and while those workshops were going on, I started kind of thinking and crafting up some of this. And the whole point of that would be to sort of start with tests and start at the very beginning of this idea that can I just create a board? Can I create a board then and does it initialize the grid to empty? Can I create a board and birth a cell? Uh, the, you know, just some really simple concepts. If we come up and see how how those play out, our aggregate root for those following along at home, in this case is game, and game has uh, grids and settings and some cells and some interesting, I decided to break out the calculations for the directions, and uh, part of this game is to ask yourself of the eight blocks I touch, um, that that would be how I would come up with ultimately if I live or die. And here's most of that logic, pretty pretty straightforward. All right, so we come into the game and we would say new game, and provided us a name and a set of game settings. And so we might have a name, uh, the height and width of the grid, and whether you want the thing to wrap screen. Do you assume if you bleed over the right-hand side of the grid, do you pop back up at the left, etc. All right, then some things to clean up, like we'll definitely not continue to inject the strategies that I didn't really know. Uh, some notes I took while we were thinking, and I didn't really know uh, how these strategies would play out. It turns out they're all applied in one block, so there's really no need for different strategies at this time, but come back to that. It's going to initiate, uh, initialize a game grid, and that grid is going to initialize some cells based on the height and width that you set it. Otherwise, pretty boring, right? A pretty straightforward setup. The grid cell itself, uh, XY coordinates, and that's pretty much it. Just a big array of XY coordinates and whether or not that cell is alive. All right, so before we leave core, then let's do some tests, right? Let's see this stuff all pay off. 
So we're going to come in here to these unit tests. Fire those off. Uh, we saw the constructor tests. Um, we've got here a sense of being able to like initialize the grid with some pre sense of data or some structures so we could think about beginning to move it through iterations. If we set that data, you know, not the best test in the world, but do we go from zero to 12 uh, data points in that array? Um, if we execute the strategies, right, do things take place? And so creating a game and setting up that initial grid and then running it through one round of strategies, again, not the world's smartest test, but have we dropped from um, the 10 or 12 cells we had originally highlighted to the five that should be alive in that next increment? All right, so that's pretty pretty straightforward. I haven't wired in uh, the, the mock and handler. There's no behavior yet to mock, so thinking about life, but I do support these events, and the domain events are there for the birthing and passing away of cells. All right, pretty cool, pretty cool. So as we leave that core experience, and maybe if you're craving a UI or a console app, or, you know, it's a long ways to get down to this pretty Blazor client UI and starting from scratch and building something. You can really look to these unit tests and if you're doing a kindness, maybe a TDD approach to these unit tests, but if you're looking at these unit tests as that first fast easiest moment to try stuff and make sure that all of your objects once hydrated in memory behave the way you expect. And so this is equivalent or better than a console app. Uh, but let's stay back up here, all right? We're going to move to infrastructure, and we see just some basic setups. So of all the aggregate root, what parts of that can actually be persisted in the database and the database is going to know about? And there's a few little things that you'll end up doing here, like we've got an ignore rule, right, to help us cope with some things we didn't want to store in the database, and we may change our minds later, but uh, otherwise we just kind of go through and describe the relationships because we didn't want to dirty up our business library with any sense of these things. So we just let this be uh, described in that infrastructure layer and then you kind of inherit all that's goodness. All right. Um, we also have a little CQRS going on down here. So get game by ID, get all games, um, command, uh, create a game, force a cell to live or die, haven't implemented. Um, and then the handlers for those, so we can see when we tell mediator, hey, if you happen to get this command, uh, we can handle that for you, right? So that's how mediator pipeline is playing in, basically a in-memory message delivery service um, with some, yeah, cool. <laughs> All right, so like get game by ID query, what does that really mean? Well, we are going to accept the query, create a specification from it, and then execute that specification against our repository, which is wrapped around our aggregate root. The specification is where the magic is, right? So we're way back up here again, still just chilling on the right top, and our business, see this... You've been writing these probably forever in any framework, but this there's no need for that. You don't need to put the database at the bottom of your application stack for these kinds of things to work and be clean and beautiful and fun, right? You can simply use this same link uh, interface with your business objects, and it, as it's hydrated in memory, it has no care whether it's a database or not. If you happen to, you know fill the whole thing up, <laughs> flood all your data into all of its potential spots in memory, you could really just kind of hold this thing or this collection of games in your hand and ask it uh, to just behave, right? It's a wonderful um, feeling. And so down here in the query, we're saying, yeah, I do want to go grab... Um, the relationship, you know, whichever ones you want it to find, right? So in this case, we are grabbing all those grid cells. Uh, but when we grab all the games, we don't want those grid cells because there are a million of them. And we're probably going to re-architect that dramatically. That seems like a, a silly way unless there's some really good business argument for us to uh, cache store persist 
that particular data. But, you know, make it work. They make it fast. They make it delicious. You know, some, some order of that. Um, and then, right, like this is terrible. Right? Just making it work for, for a minute. All right, so we are still just chilling in between core and infrastructure. We haven't gone very far. We haven't exposed anything terribly fun or cool, but our business is uh, beginning to really build up. If we come down here now to our tests and we look at our integration tests, we can see, are we able to stimulate air quotes, any framework in this case, and its desire to persist data. And the way we ultimately end up wiring that up, it simply takes the infrastructure project and provide it an in-memory database for the AppDB context configuration options, and away it goes. Not not a lot of cleverness needed to be had there, and uh, mock out mediator, and we can treat it like a pretty straightforward first-class citizen, right? Give me the repo, set up some objects in memory, tickle the repo um, repository pattern, and make sure that if we fetch it, we actually got something back. You can go back and make these way more delicious. All right, so let's see these integration tests. Do their thing. And all is well. We see the three boop, update, delete, and add tests running. Now this got us to using an in-memory data store as if it were SQLite or proper SQL or Postgres. <laughs> you can kind of fake a lot of these. There's some limitations. Like you're not going to be able to test applying migrations and these kinds of things. You'll have to start with a clean um, migration. And, uh, but what's really nice about these tests, the way we bootstrap into the primary applications, and this is only really friendly and works if you have control of the whole stack and it's all .NET Core Delicious, etc., is you can reach right into that iContainer service and remove anything that you don't want to have applied in your tests or if you want to change the opinion or flow of something. So... That is handy. All right, as we continue to work down the stack, um, I mentioned the API common. So we have our view models, uh, some validators that can be applied both to the API endpoint as well as used by the front end UI. We have request response objects to support talking back and forth and the view models that will ultimately be returned so we can take some control. And in this case, like we remove some of those nefarious uh, properties and methods that don't apply. Um, you can reshape the data just for the view. It'll start out pretty similar, uh, but yeah. All right, so, so API common smashes into API. It also smashes into Blazor, but let's go down the API route. First thing, we're not really using the modern controller approach. We could, um, for sure, and I might implement both just to keep showing both. Instead, we have this sort of endpoint pattern. And so each of these endpoints describes its request and response, inject the repository and mapper, auto mapper, describe that route to Swagger. Nice, we can provide better data, etc. And then turn around and handle um, based on this, <laughs> that API endpoint. We also see a couple of patterns here where we're taking the route definitions from the request objects and they do different things to craft that route. This one's not very interesting. Uh, let's do an uh, by ID request. And so this is a valid route tag if you were back here. I had recently I was doing some testing so I can prove. There we go. Right. Same same thing. Alright, so we have these endpoints. We have a create game, get game by ID. We have uh, 
multi plural, so games, get all a list of all the games, and this health check. Right. Cool. Let us look then how we would test something like this. So we can start out, you know, just testing each endpoint, get by ID. And similar uh, to each of the others, we're bootstrapping the existing API project. Again, something that you might have to handle differently if you're not in control and can't have .NET and deliciousness on both sides. But uh, well enough, we are able. So we go ahead and uh, run this application using its startup. We do see in here that we remove uh, its app db context so that we can provide our own right delicious and we provide our own app db context again we ditch out to that in memory database we have options here um, cool so if we want to test like the api games returns more than one game call that endpoint Pretty straightforward, simple, kind of boring. I started to make them a little nicer. Here we see uh, create that first game. So we have some test data. Somebody help me with a better pattern here. Um, I just have this giant static block of funk uh, describing usable test data that gets seeded in the database through data seed and then used in tests. Anyway. So I take and build up the request to grab that game one by ID. And upon return, then we're using the Fluent interface here to say, well, that ID should then be equal to uh, the ID we were looking for. And consequently, not null and all the other things. <laughs> the game uh, name should reference the name that came from that first game that uh, was put there by the seed data. Right? And, you know, do we throw good errors and, and test test all the good stuff? And if you have a good habit of creating named exceptions, right, that stuff becomes really, really kind. All right, well, that was kind of a walk. I didn't complete the front end, but I got close to something almost usable. And so if we look at the client itself, we just come into index and you could create a new game. Now we get to new game. We come right in here and get up a new key because we want to hang on to it. Uh, create a new game settings, create a new game request. Once that comes back, we're going to then navigate over to game, pass it, take that ID with us. All right, and that comes in on the router. Bound by the parameter tag here. And so now we're going to build up a request. All right, so I left this a little ugly. I, I'm 12 minutes into this thing, so uh, definitely ahead of myself here. But uh, get game by ID request. We've got that game ID that was passed in on the parameter uh, URL route. Then we've got data service, load game data, bind to that game data. And because we're using... Uh, built-in notifications we could do that in either order and if this changes then this guy's aware and it changes uh, if we go look at that data service there's a pattern I haven't completely satisfied I'm not sure I love it um, but yeah the data service certainly can cache and host and keep and maintain that sense of game data or maybe he should just bugger off and return it um, <laughs> but for now he hangs on to it and then notify state change all right, and so we then have a game bound here locally, and all this should work. I'm going to close this. And if you're not familiar, down here in Workspace, I have this load terminal that describes what I want from life, and that's brought to us by this cat. And if I go Control Shift P and grab that T loader. It is going to spin all these things up for me and give me what I want. Give this just a second to cook. And so you can't even see what's on the screen here. But there's a button. <laughs> if I click the button, it drove me over to game. Grab that network. Uh, sorry, that good. And if we look on the network, we have our game. So more to follow. What else? 
could I show or would be useful? I think that's a decent introduction. Uh, certainly a lot more to do. I want to really make the test data very obvious and set up some of these known experiments so we can make sure that the you know we're going to have a test for each one of these. If I start here and I move through however many iterations, do I continue to stay stable and do the things that the game is supposed to do? Heck yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish the UI. And for now, I'll probably just continue. Like, uh, what's the best way for me to show you? Let's bounce over here to Swaggy for a minute. Uh, so get all the games. Let's make a nice clean world so we're not looking at a million games. So I just deleted the API database and re-ran it. It's building it out. Adding some seed data. Away we go. Uh, so get all the games. This gives us a list of the two games that were part of the seed data scripts. Let's get, grab game number one here. Uh, get game by ID. Try it out. All right. It's going to be a little thicker because it's got uh, all those data points. If I stick with that pattern, which I'm not going to, I would simply use it to load the initial state from a saved game or whatever. And then all the other communications over the wire could simply be what cells uh, lived or died or I don't know. Well, I think I'm just going to serialize. Here's what I'm talking about. Like, this is a, a silly amount of noise for some XY coordinates and a Boolean. <laughs> like, way more data in that ID tag than there is in the whole rest of, of that uh, bit of data. So I don't like that. That smells and it's thick and slow. And if you made a huge grid, uh, that's going to get obnoxious fast. So instead, I think I'll turn around and we'll serialize this as best we can. Maybe even trick compress that a little bit and um, come up with a clever way to transmit this bit of data because in the end we want to hand something of that to signal r and let it update in real time and yeah, it'll be fun we're gonna we're gonna go wild with this thing all right well we did get back a game and it does have all of these cells and they do have some sort of position in the world and if i wanted to increment them for you the easiest way to let you see that would be to come back probably to this yeah, unit test. I told you this is the uh, this these unit tests. Mm. There's no better way to slap around everything that should matter about your code. But if we come into this unit test and we do this strategy one and we set some breakpoints and we debug this critter, should be able to get some console out that you can see and believe that something is happening. There you go. So our initial 12 point state. And then we iterated one time in applying those rules. Now, I, somebody will have to eyeball if these are good. I'm going to wait until I can write some useful test data that I know this input, this output, this input, this output. Uh, I was just happy to see it start dancing. And so I know if I keep applying those rules, this thing will keep it dancing. And uh, this code is out here available. I hope you find something interesting in here. And honest to goodness, I've, you know, this took me 25 years plus two days, uh, three days. I'll have, uh, I mean, there's more to show. Some of this I just kind of carry around, so it wasn't a huge lift. But this idea of spinning all this out now into Docker container and hosting an NGINX, and, hmm, fun project. Till next time. <laughs> Catch you later. Cheers. Deedly.